Hey guys, welcome back to Ninjago DCV. Today we're back for another top 10 video, a bit of a follow up to the Ranking the Realms video. We're doing top 10 Ninjago locations. I tried not to include separate realms as locations, and mainly we're just taking a look at actual locations within the realm of Ninjago. So that can pertain to buildings, actual places, or you know, biomes, or anything else of the sort. So yeah guys, with that being said, let's get started. In 10th place we have the Lighthouse Prison, which is where Dr. Julian was held captive for a long time. And, the, well, the building is just okay, you know, not bad, but just a normal lighthouse. It, it's the concept that I really love about this place. You would normally expect a lighthouse to be on shore, acting as a guide for ships coming in, but no, this is actually in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of the ocean, which makes it a really cool concept. Moreover, it was used as a prison, so, I mean, I think that's really cool, rather than just, you know, setting up a normal jail cell in some underground cavern or something, uh, Samakai actually puts Dr. Julian in the middle of the ocean in a lighthouse, and I just think that concept is really cool. Within the lighthouse, there are also a lot of gadgets and stuff, hidden passageways, and as we saw, Nia and Jay did some renovations in Season 6 to make like the entire top floor turn around or something. Anyways, the lighthouse is just really cool. In ninth place, we have the Wailing Alps, a location that was briefly explored in Season 5. Man, I really love the concept of this. So it is established that this is at an extremely high elevation, as there are a lot of winds that served as an obstacle for the ninja. And what I absolutely loved about the way this was done in Season 5 was there were two obstacles for the ninja. One being the actual weather, which is really barren, lots of winds, avalanches, all the sort. And then there was also more on his goons. So yeah, there were two threats there. But overall, the Willing Gaps is a really cool location. Moreover, Bansha actually uh, wailed and yodeled really badly, <laughs> which made avalanches fall down. So I found that to be really cool, and I love the whole wailing effect of it. Overall, I feel like the Wailing Alps are a really fun location. Just nicely designed, nice concept and all, and I'd love for them to be revisited again. In 8th place, we have the Temple of Air Jitsu, which has been through a few weird changes throughout the series' run. First of all, it looked like it, how it does in this image here, kind of barren, all the trees around it are dead, and it kind of looked wrecked, but then of course later on, the temple actually was raised up into the sky as a result of Skybound, which is pretty interesting, then after Day of the Departed, it kind of became purified in a way, and the ninja moved in, so yeah, it's been through a few weird changes, but overall, we all know and love the Temple of Erjitsu, which is a favorite set to many people, and in the show, it has an equally awesome looking counterpart. The design of the Temple of Air Jitsu is just flat out awesome. I really love the way they designed it, making it more like a much bigger temple than some of the other temples. Very traditional looking, and I really love that aspect of it. So in seventh place, we have Borg Tower, and Borg Tower is introduced in season three, and since then it has become a pretty iconic location. When you're talking about Ninjago, you imagine Borg Tower, and it's the tallest building in Ninjago, or at least in Ninjago City. So yeah, I really love the way that Borg Tower is designed for that whole futuristic approach rebooted brought. I just love the way it looks inside also, just very futuristic. And even in this, these images of the lobby in Cyrus Borg's office, I love the patterns on the floor. It just really helps to build up that futuristic vibe. Now, of course, it is a gigantic tower, and I love the way it looks on the outside too, with the, the little structure on the top. That's very nice. Of course, Borg Tower was taken over by Garbodon in season nine and kind of became ugly pretty much. But overall, we all know and love Borg Tower as an iconic location in Jago. So next we have Chen's Island and Palace. And there's a lot of mystery surrounding Chen's Island. What, with the crystals that absorb the powers and all? And this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love this setting. It was a very unique setting for the Tournament of Elements season. It was a jungle, but it also had a lot of other things going on too. One of the most notable was Chen's Palace, which was hidden in the island. Chen's Palace is a really nice location. Definitely somewhere where you'd want to live. All the hero suites are very nice, and in addition, there's also just the overall palace. It resembles that of a royal palace, and of course, there is a real royal palace in Ninjago, but personally, this one is better. Anyways, moving on, the island is filled with mysteries, and that's really one of the reasons why I love it. I just love the jungle setting, and it was such an appropriate setting for a fabulous season, Tournament of Elements. In fifth place, we have the first Minjutsu Master's Tomb, which is another place that had a lot of mystery surrounding it. And I absolutely love the three tests that were set up in the first Minjutsu Master's Tomb. They're just so creative. We have the first test, which is the Zoe Trope, or however it's pronounced, which is that room where you have to do Spinjitsu in order to see the correct symbol. This is one of the most mysterious rooms in the entire tomb, as there were rumors of possibly the wrong door opening up into the wrong realm, and that never really got sorted out or confirmed anywhere, so that is very cool. Then we also have the Golden Staff Room, and 
you know, uh, one of the big mysteries there was what is what is the golden staff, just to, the first Vegeta Master staff, and could it be collected at all in the end? And then, of course, the third room with the reflections, the infamous reflections, those were really cool, and I absolutely loved that touch, including, uh, you know, the future reflections of the ninja. And then, of course, there's the main room with the first Pinjutsu Master's remains, and the whole, uh, and the skeleton, of course, the realm crystal. But I, I really loved how it was underwater, but at the same time, it resembled an icy cavern. And next, we have the monastery, which is Master Wu's childhood home, the first Pinjutsu Master's home, and a big rendezvous point during the Serpentine Wars, and most recently, the ninja's original base. Now, it's a shame this location was burned down in, of course, the, you know, season one. The Ape Number I burned it down in episode two, but this location was really cool, and I absolutely loved its setting. It was placed on a mountain that literally was above the clouds. It was that tall, and I really loved that kind of setting. It's really a strategic location if you think about it. And then there's the actual monastery, which is really cool. A place of peace, yet, you know, they're they're fighting here. And I absolutely love that. It's a nice, peaceful monastery, but with some modern touches, too, with the whole training course thing. And overall, this location is extremely historic, has a lot of historical significance, but yet it's definitely one of the best locations in Ninjago. I love where it's placed in comparison to the other locations. And the monastery itself is just really cool. In third place, we have the Temple of Light. So the Temple of Light had a really interesting architecture. I love the way it was done with the two kind of pillar structures going up at the back of the temple. I really loved that way it was done. And then the inside of the temple, which is kind of barren, nothing much there, but in reality, there's quite a bit. So first there were those weird drawings of the ninja, which I find to be really cool. I love how their story is actually getting told through the paintings in the temple. It makes you question, what is drawing that? Uh, you know, is this, what is drawing the ninja? And that's just something I love. You know, question without an answer, really. Now, more importantly, it was where Lloyd kind of received his golden powers. I'm not really sure how that whole thing worked out. But that was a really cool scene with the whole lights and all the crystals and stuff. And I definitely... Speaking of the Dark Island, number two brings us the Dark Island, which is the other half of Ninjago. The Dark Island was a really, really cool location, and I absolutely loved it as a setting for Season 2. And it's a shame that it never got revisited. It got revisited once, kind of, in Season 3, and then there was a whole trilogy around it, the Dark Island trilogy, with Klaus as the main villain, but that's a graphic novel, not a TV show. So, but anyways, moving on, the Dark Island was such a cool place, as a counterpart of Ninjago. Had a lot of, it had dark matter, which was native to the area. And the location was just really cool too. There was a lot of the island that was never explored in the show, and I'd love to see it get revisited sometime to explore the rest of the island. Overall, it was mostly jungle with some really creepy places, such as the Mouth of Eternal Shadows or the Mount of Eternal Shadows. But anyways, I love the Dark Island, just full of mystery, and it's a perfect counterpart for Ninjago Island. And then, of course, in number one, you saw this coming, is Ninjago City, one of the most visited locations in Ninjago. It's kind of funny, on episode 5, the ninja said that they always wanted to come to Ninjago City, and the city was kind of described as somewhere really fascinating, really magical in a sort of way, and then later on, this is pretty much the main setting of the show at this point. The ninja, the city has really evolved a lot, from just being a normal city, to really futuristic with Bork Tower appearing in the skyline, and I absolutely love Ninjago City because of this. The futuristic approach was one of the best things that happened in Jago City, with the skyline getting really defined and a lot of new locations popping up. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of locations in Jago City, such as Borg Tower, which I've already talked about, Temple of Fortitude, which was somewhere in Jago City for some reason, and then a lot of other locations like the hospital, some arcades and stuff. Anyways, it's a really, really, really cool location, and I love it being the main center of Ninjago. There, so yeah, guys, that's gonna be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone, everyone you know. And tomorrow we'll be doing the follow-up to the minifigures that should exist video, um, sets that ex should exist, the Season 9 update. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.